What's up, guys? It's your boy, Reese Boy, back with another video. All right, so we have Gatorade. I'm going to put you over here. So you're still in the video. And then I'm going to put Kona's water bottle. And guys, we have a little concoction I made up my sale. So basically what we have in this little concoction bowl is we have leftover beans. We have leftover beans. We have chicken that I uh, cut up. We have some ham in here. We have some of the little crunchy little things that go on top of your green bean casserole. We got beans in here and we got a little bit of ranch dressing. So it's all really protein, no carbs at all. Well, the little crunchy things are probably carbs, but you got your cheese, you got your meat, you got, well, you got your dairy, you got some two dairies because ranch is dairy. And then you got your protein, your meat. Oh, beans is a carb. Duh, I'm so stupid. Let's say grace and then we'll talk. Dear God, bless us for you. Pray for the holiday weekend. Pray that everyone has fun with family and friends and keep everyone safe that's traveling. And uh, <clears throat> pray for me and my little angry, little frustrated situation right now. And just pray that you give me all grace and bring me some good news in the new year and help me with decisions I have to make and help me with finding a new job. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So let's drink our Gatorade Zero. Or no, this is not Zero. So, guys, I'm a little pissed off right now because I don't know why I'm pissed off. I forgot to give you guys a first bite. Oh, crap. We dropped some chicken. I don't know. I don't know why I'm pissed off. Oh, I'm, I know why I'm pissed off. I know I'm, I know exactly why I'm pissed off, actually. Don't mind my shirt if it's a little dirty, guys. I um, have a lot of vapor rub on my chest because I'm sick still. That's probably why I'm frustrated the most. But the other reason why I'm frustrated is because the two people that I came back to Florida for are being completely jerks. Um, I'm, I'm frustrated because If I would have known I was going to be alone for Christmas again, like I was last year, I would have just stayed in D.C. and hanged out with my, my sisters and my nephews and got to have fun. I had so much fun for Thanksgiving and my sister's birthday. No stress, just fun. I don't know why I came back to Florida. I have no reason why I'm back here, like none. Shout out to you, Lily. I see your comments. Thank you for catching up on my videos. I know there's a lot. Thank you for letting me know that you and John support me if I move or if I stay. And shout out to you, Benita, knowing you'll support me too. But guess what? Something might happen next year that I'm really excited for. But I'm just, I'm holding out hope. Fingers crossed. One of my best friends, she's looking for an apartment. And she told me that I could come hit, hit up with her and we could maybe get a place together. So I'm thinking about it, guys. And then one of my other best friends that's still in Ohio, Steve, that never left. I need to see what his life is like because I would move up there with him in Ohio and hang out with him. Or I just, I don't want to stay in Florida no more. Like I am... If I can, and I, I mean, please hold me to this. If I can, 2024, I'm getting the hell out of Florida. I don't want to be here no more. There's nothing in Florida that holds me to it. Like, there's nothing that makes me happy in Florida. Like, there's so many, there's good memories, a lot of good memories in Florida. But then there's, like, a lot of shitty memories in Florida. A lot of shitty memories. That might actually outdo the fun memories. I mean, let me tell you guys a little story of how, the, I, I think I've told this story. So in 2004, we were talking about moving, right? So my parents were like, okay, we're going to get a rental house, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to sell the farm. They sold the farm because they thought me and my brother didn't want to take care of the farm anymore. And that was not the truth. The thing was just the ba the sheep would always have their babies in below zero weather and it would be freezing cold and my mom would be out there trying to like help them push the babies and then we would have to bring the big ass buckets of water that would be like frozen over and it just was a lot of work during the winters the summers were fine because we would just mow and whatever and a lot of my friends thought I was cool that I lived on a farm so 
I'm mad now that I'm in my 30s that we didn't keep the farm in the family so we could show the next generation and the next generation. I'm so mad about that, but it is what it is. Um, so, so anyway, so we move in the rental house. I go to a new school. My brother stays at the Christian school. I get kicked out. I go to a public school called Miamisburg High. And I go there and we're the, we're the, what was our mascot? Not a Buccaneers. What was it? It was some type of person. I don't remember. Oh my God. So anyways, I go to that school, make a lot of friends, make my best friend, Steven there. Shout out to Steven. I had another best friend named Cody. I had a lot of friends. Met a lot of people there. Courtney, I met Courtney there. I had a lot of friends. Um, I had my first girlfriend my freshman year of high school. Um, I dated before that, but my parents didn't know about it. Like, it was all top secret, but they finally let me date my freshman year of high school. So, then we moved here my my sophomore year of high school, and I was so mad because I had to leave, like, all my friends, moved to godforsaken Florida where it's hot, there's sinkholes, and I had no friends. Only thing I had was my best friends that were my cousins, and that was it, and my grandparents. Um... We only moved to Florida to take care of my grandparents. They weren't even ready. They told my dad no. We lived with them for like a year and a half until this house was built, March of 2007. And then I, just, I went through so much crap, guys. Like I went to so many different schools in that time. And then I just went through a lot of heartache. So anyways, I just didn't want to move to stupid Florida. Like there just was nothing here. And then my best friend, Steve, his parents were like, Matt can move in with us. That's fine. And you guys just finish school together and then get an apartment. But my mom was like, no, we're not going to leave my kid behind. And I'm like, I should have emancipated myself and became my own legal adult at 15 and a half. Especially with all the child abuse that I went through. I could have done it. The courts would have definitely signed off on it. With the help of like total adults, like my best friend's parents, my two sisters, and that would have, probably would have been it. But no, I come to Florida like an idiot because I was being controlled. And I'm so mad at myself that I didn't fight for my right. Because the year before that, they kicked me out. So it was like, what's the big deal? Why do you want me to come? They literally kicked me out for like seven months and I had to go live with like this Christian family and stuff. And I told that story in a YouTube video a while back, actually, when I was in D.C. Um, so I'm like, why do you want to drag me to Godforsaken Florida if you don't even want me? Like, you literally call child services and everything, and we're ready to get rid of me. But I end up in a family because, oh, we just want Matthew to obey. It's like, what the, like, anyways, we're not going to talk about my childhood. That's another story. So anyway, 2024, guys, is my year. I'm getting the hell out of Florida. I've made up my mind last night. Last night. Somebody, someone made me realize that enough is enough. When I need to fight for my rights and I need to get the hell out of Florida. Like, there's no reason for me to be here. None. If I got support from my friends and certain family members that actually would care, why am I here? And I might not even go to D.C. I might go to, like, Ohio, New York, New Jersey, California. I don't know. I just want to go somewhere that's, like, far enough away from Florida. Like, literally, like, it's three-hour flight to come to see me. Like, I just don't want to be here. I'm done. I'm done being taken advantage of. I'm done being used. I'm done being lied to. I'm done being mentally abused by people. I'm just, I'm over it. I'm start, I'm done being manipulated with all these sob, shitty ass stories that don't even add up or make sense. I'm done falling for that crap. If someone don't want you in their life, they need to say it to your face. They need to stop bullshitting and they need to stop using you for money and they need to stop using and abusing you. Like they need to just tell you to your face like, I don't want you in my life. And I'm out. Bye. Like, I'm not going to waste my time no more. I'm done doing that shit. So, um, 
And then Jabba's too busy working, so I don't ever get to see her around the holidays. Disney, like, keeps her so busy. Like, last year, we didn't even get to spend Christmas Day with each other. And I worked Christmas morning from 6 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. I came home and I was by myself the rest of the day. I could have done something with somebody, but I didn't. Because my parents went to Tampa to go spend it with my brother. I don't like that brother, so I didn't go to Tampa. Um, Because we just don't get along. Um, it's not that we hate each other. It's it's just a fake relationship. It's just like, hi, bye. And it's like, that's it. Like It's like, because he's a professor and he's super, super smart, but he's all about money. It's like... He looks at me like I'm stupid. Like, it makes me, oh, I hate people like that. I hate people like that. <coughs> Hello, I went to college too, so shut the hell up. I'm sorry that you ran away from your family and joined a cult and then want to come back only because your wife told you to come back. I'm like, come on. I was never close to him even growing up because he left when I was like five and came back when I was like 15. I've never really been close to him, ever. I have no fond memories of him at all. At all. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Because my parents sent me to a summer camp that was at Cedarville Co Community College. It's a Christian college in Ohio. Shout out to you. My parents sent me to this thing, um, a summer camp. And I remember I went to the summer camp at the college. And it was like all, I don't know if it was all day or all week. I don't remember. And I don't remember if you had to, I think you had to spend the night. I don't remember. But my parents sent me to a summer camp. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was the first time I was away from home. I was so happy. And I remember I had so much fun. And then my brother, you were able to like, your family members were like, <clears throat> if you had any family members that went to the college, they were allowed to like come get you for the day and like just hang out with you. And he came and got me for the day and just hanged out with me. Like we went out to eat. We hanged out in his dorm. We walked the park. Like we just had fun. Like that time was fun. I remember that time. And I got to hang out with a lot of his friends that the one girl became my sister-in-law and then we got super close. But I just remember that time. Like, that's, like, one of my fondest memories of him is that he was, like, such a cool person. Like, he came, he played soccer with us, and everyone's like, your brother's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, he is. But that is, like, one of my only fondest memories of, of that. Nothing else. But there's nothing holding me here. Like, really, there's nothing. I'm choking. I'm excited. Like, like, I'm seriously, like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, he says he's going to move and he never moves. It's not that. It's not that I never move. It's the fact that you got to make sure all your money is right in a row for people who are adults and they know this and don't have money handed to them. Believe me. If I had money handed to me, I'd have never ended up in Florida. I'm telling you that right now. Um, And I wouldn't have not just took it. Like, I like people that are in these, like, these kids that are like Lionel Richie's kids that are like all self-made, they didn't just sit up there and lie up on their money. Or the Hilton sisters, like they made a name for themselves. I like people that do that with their family's dynasty instead of just lying up there and mooching off of people. Like go and do something with yourself. Like the Kardashians, yes, they all got famous because Kim laid on her back with Ray J, but still they all made money. They all turned that into a billion dollar company and then... Chris used pretty much all her kids where they are, except poor Rob. Rob is like stuck in everyone's shadows. But I think China messed him up. And other people. I think Chloe and Lamar's divorce messed him up because he was so close with Lamar. And what Lamar did to his sister ruined him. But at least he got a little cute daughter out of it. At least he got a kid. He's not completely alone. And he was always good with kids. So I know he's a good dad. Um, but... Yeah, I just feel sorry for him. He's overweight now and everything. I wish he would do something for people overweight and then there's a career. Like, you know, you can relate to it. But he just stays out of the limelight. No one even knows where he's at. He hasn't been on the show at all. Not that I watch, but I think I do follow him on social media and he doesn't post anymore. He posts about his socks and then his socks business really didn't take off. I, nothing because he didn't promote it enough he didn't go on no tv shows he didn't come on the reality show with it 
He didn't put it anywhere. Just a few times on Instagram and his sisters posted it. That was it. He never went anywhere far with it. He didn't promote it at all. You got to promote your business. But anyways, like I'm saying, money was never handed to me. I would have to work hard. And if I ever made it big on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, I would get myself my own apartment and I would be somewhere where I could make enough money to support myself and I would just live. And then I'd probably buy me a nice girlfriend. We would settle down, get married, have us some kids, and then just live life happily. That's what we would do. I mean, I know some people think I'm too ugly to fall in love or blah, 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 blah. Those people are just immature. Like, I have people that literally, and I'm not just saying this, that literally are looking at me and think I'm handsome and think, hey, I would date them or they like my personality. I don't need to lie about that. You don't have to have these cut and cutter people that are like perfect and you have to be perfect. Like that, I hate that society makes you like that because your little looks are not going to last forever. All you need is one bad accident or something happens or you get an allergic reaction to something and you mess up your whole face or your whole body. That's all you take. That's all it takes. Look at some of these athletes that have had a bad accident and don't look the same at all anymore. So, your gene pool has to be really good to have that adorable face or to have that good body for the rest of your life. Like, I have a baby face. I don't know where I got it from, but I have a baby face. Um, and I had a beautiful smile before I stopped taking care of myself. But, like, people would always say I had a beautiful smile, always, when I was a little kid. And even into my adult years. Like, oh my God, his smile is just so beautiful. And it's like, it's contagious and whatever it was. So you have to take care of yourself. Whatever God gives you, you have to take care of it. I know I'm all over the place, guys. But talking to you guys helps me to de-stress and not get angry right now. Because I'm just, I'm so, oh my God. I'm just so angry. Like, I don't know why. I'm just like so pissed off right now. Like, I just don't, I don't know. I get that way now. Like when stuff, it's not when stuff doesn't go my way. It's just when people lie to me and tell me one thing and then I find out the truth later. That's the part that drives me crazy. Like I'm like, wow, why couldn't you have just been honest and tell me the truth? You know, or something like that. That's what pisses me off about people. It's like, why do you need to sugarcoat it and lie? Like, just be honest. It's not that hard. Like I don't do, I don't do liars i can't stand a, a liar okay and i don't try to lie i might lie about like it's not that i lie it's that i might fib to not hurt you if that makes sense like i might not tell you the full truth so i guess technically it's still a lie but i might not say stuff because one i don't want to hurt your feelings two i'm a really caring person so i know how to just keep my mouth quiet and then three three I just say how would I want to, like how would I want to be treated in the situation like I just stay quiet like if something bothers me I just I don't say nothing because it's like I was taught to just keep my mouth quiet and I guess that's bad because then that lets people walk all over you because they're like oh well Matthew's never gonna say nothing so we can just take advantage of Matthew so it doesn't matter and so maybe I need to learn how to be like no I don't want to do that or no I don't want to talk to you or no I don't want to hang out with you <clears throat> excuse me it's okay to learn how to start saying no and that's what I need to do in this new year. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm going to start doing. Yep. Like my sister and me are on this thing where it's like, let's take back our lives and stop letting people control it. Let's take it back. So, if someone says something to me that I'm just like, I don't want to do it. Sorry, I don't want to do it. Like, I don't have to sugarcoat it i don't have to be like feel bad that i hurt their feelings just like no i'm good i don't need to do it who cares what you think and who cares what you say my problem is that i have a soft spot for someone if someone tells me they love me or someone puts on like a baby face or something or someone just has like this thing where it's like they've already captured my heart it's hard for me to say no to you. It's so hard for me to say no to you. Even though I know you don't need it and even though I know you're being a jerk and you're being really rude, if they've already have, and people use it like this, if they've already got their um, 
claws in you or whatever you want to call it, or they think they have you whipped or whatever it is. <clears throat> There's another word that people use, but I'm not going to curse on my channel. <clears throat> that part makes me mad because if other people are telling them that and it's like, that's not true. Like, that's just, that's his character. That's who he is. It doesn't mean that they're your, the B word or they're, you got them whipped or whatever. It's just that they care enough that they don't want to see you be in pain or they don't want to see you hurting or they don't want to see you suffering. So they do stuff for you. That does not make a person the B word or whipped. It just means that they know how it feels to have nothing or they know how it feels to be like hungry or need something and you can't get it. Like they just, they don't want to see you do without. So that doesn't mean that they're weak or they're retarded or they're slow or they're stupid or they're dumb because they don't see that they're being used. Yes, I've been used in the past, believe me. And yes, I was stupid and I was slow because I did not see it. Yes, that 100%, I agree with those people. But nowadays, nah, no. I know I'm being used and sometimes I allow it to a point and then I'm like, nah, I'm done. Like, I get used here a lot and I get to a point where I'm just like, I'm done. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. Or there's other people that will use me for different things and I'm like, no, I don't want to get that for you. No, I don't have to get that for you. It doesn't matter if you cry, throw a tantrum, scream, yell, call me every name in the book. I don't care. Because you're going to get over it in a few hours and be fine, you know? So, no. No. But what I have realized, too, is I don't have to stay somewhere I'm not where I don't want to be or I don't feel wanted or I don't feel loved. Like, this house does not feel like a home to me. This house literally just feels like four walls made out of cedar and whatever else they put in these walls. And um, you can't say concrete because the homes in Florida are not made with concrete. That's why they blow away. So I want to say drywall. Definitely drywall. They're not made with concrete. That's the problem in Florida. That's that's why these houses flood, fall apart, or whatever. They need to be made with concrete or stone like they do up north because they're smart. Because up north has tornadoes. Florida has hurricanes. So you would think Florida would think, but they don't. Um. Yeah, but these... No, this house does not feel like home to me. This house feels like a dictatorship. It feels like a really evil, long, 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 long boarding school that has no end date on when you can get the hell out. So, that's just my opinion. Has it ever felt like home? No, I don't really think it has. No. Home to me is a family that loves each other and gets along. Not all the time, but gets along. Spends time together and has really good memories. I'm not going to say there's not good memories, but has it felt like home? No, not really. I feel like my last house that I felt safe and at home at was probably in Ohio, the rental house, not even my farmhouse because stuff happened to me there. That didn't feel safe at all. But I want to say my rental house that I was at before we moved here, because my parents wanted to rent. They didn't want to buy anything. They just wanted to rent because it made no sense. So they just rented a house for a year. That house felt like home because we all came together around the fireplace. We had hot chocolate, eggnog. Stayed, me and my brother stayed up all night with our two best friends and waited for like, you know, the next morning, Christmas morning. There was a lot of sleepovers. There was a lot of fun. I felt safe. That house felt like home. I mean, there were a lot of fights and stuff, but still, that house felt like home. You know, like, I really felt safe at that house. You know, but here in Florida, I don't know. This house is not going home at all. And that's sad because I always want that. Like I said, I've never felt, I've never felt safe in my life, ever. So, I want that feeling. Like, I don't even know how that feeling feels. I just have never felt safe, ever, by any, by, I felt safe in some of my relationships, but not all of my relationships. But, like, me in general, just myself, I've never felt safe. I think that that's why I have a big problem with abandonment issues and, like, just a lot of stuff that I'm in my 30s and I'm realizing, like, dude, you have a lot of problems. But 
if I'm seeing a psychologist, I've been on different medications before. They might put me on another one. I'm not bipolar. I've been checked for that. I just have severe depression. I have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And then I have crippling depression on top of that because of so much trauma that's happened in my life. And then I have a food disorder on top of that. So thank God I don't have any of the other issues like some people do. But like, it makes sense why my mood swings go up and down a lot. And why I have moments where I'm just totally happy, fine. And then I'm totally sad. And I'm just like, I want to end it all. I don't want to be here. I don't want to talk to no one. I don't want to see no one. And this holidays, I'm trying so hard not to just isolate and go in my little cocoon and not talk to anybody. I'm trying so hard not to do that. Like my aunt wants to hang out with me and my uncle. And I'm trying so hard to just say, Matthew, you're going to go and you're going to have fun. But I'm like, I so badly just don't want to talk to anybody for the holidays. Like, I don't want to fake it at all. And I love my family. Like on that, like I definitely love them. I would never fake it with them and they're not faking it. I just feel like my brain would just feel like, overloaded like I just I don't want to be around anyone but I'm going crazy in this house too and I hate being broke I hate being broke it's so annoying because it's like I could call an uber and just go see a movie or something the new Wonka movie's out like there's stuff that I could do but when you're trying to help people that don't even give a about you or care about you or care about your situation but they're so selfish when it comes to stuff it's like me 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 but it's like damn I need to think about the other person. Like, how are they going to survive if they waste all the money on me? Like, they don't even think about you at all until after the fact. When it's like, and then even after the fact, they're still in beep hole to you. And you're like, you're like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I don't have to. And I refuse to. It's like, no. Like, I'm not going to buy you nothing. I'm not going to do nothing no more. I'm done. You need to start You need to start missing out on stuff. And you need to start feeling like, oh, sh I need to treat you better. And then they promise. They promise. They literally promise. They swear on everything. I'm going to treat you better. I'm going to be better. I promise. I promise. I promise. Where is it? I haven't even seen it. I haven't even seen it. But they want you to change. They want to say you're the problem. They want to say that you need to fix your attitude. You need to be a better person. You need to listen. I was like, doesn't it take two to make something work? I'm pretty sure. But I'm sorry. I'm, I'm rambling, guys. We're almost 30 minutes into this video. And I know this video is not going to get any views. <coughs> but in one breath, people are like, post longer videos. And in another breath, people are like, it's too long. But like uh, my best friend told me, she's like, who cares what people think? Post what you want. Who cares about what they think? They're haters because they can't even start their own channel and have people actually watch their videos. And that is true. Because next year reaches seven years. Seven years for me, and I think it's four years for Jamo on YouTube. And last year, I didn't celebrate because I was in D.C., so I totally forgot. Um, and then me and Jamo missed our anniversary of knowing each other. It was October 14th of, of this year. We missed it. And that made... 13 years of knowing each other, I think. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's the other thing, guys. We got to talk about one more thing because this video is going to be long as hell, but I really don't give a crap if people watch it or they don't watch it. But some people like it. They love my story times. Um, If someone says that they have a disability, right? And I'm going to tell you this point blank period because I've had titles on me. It does not mean that a person actually has a disability unless you have doctor notes and stuff. And even then, even then, that doesn't mean a person has a disability unless they have been trained to say certain things because they were just trained to say that. Now, if you're born with a disability and you can see that you have a disability and your parents have told you that, but they've, they've handicapped you anyways because they never let you try to do stuff on your own. So by the time you're like, in your teen years and you're used to people just doing stuff for you, then yeah, you're gonna think, okay, maybe I am special needs or maybe I am a little slower than others. But I always say that like somebody with a disability, you have to give them a chance to do it on their own. You have to give them a chance to learn. You can't baby them. And I've been babied. I've been babied so much with certain things because people are just like, no, the state says this or people say this or teachers say this. And I always go back to when I was in school 
I wasn't in all special needs classes. I had a few classes that were special needs, yes, because my guidance, my guidance counselor said that. But my senior year of high school, from Timber Creek High School, shout out to Timber Creek High School, go Wolves. I think we were Wolves. Yeah, or Coyotes. I don't remember the hell we were. I think we were Wolves. Um, my senior year of high school. My senior year of high school, I told my guidance counselor, I forget her name and I hate her because she did not do her job right. I said, my senior year, I've said that three times. I said, I want to do what I want. I want to choose the electives that I want to take, right? Because my whole year in high school, I never finished PE, right? Because I just got annoyed with it or certain things or whatever and I was just too busy. So they were like, well, your senior year and your junior year, you got to finish or you can't graduate because you have an F in that. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So I took PE my, into my junior year, into my senior year, right? Your last year of school. So I was like, okay, that's one elective, six periods, the end of the day, perfect. So first period, second period, third period, I was in OJT, it's off training. They help you learn how to get a job, right? So you're not even on the school grounds, you're volunteering at the hospital, at Burlington, at the movie theater, and at Walmart, or in Joanne's. So, basically, it's free labor. They're making you do stuff that other people don't want you to do, basically. But they're teaching you how to have job skills. So, anyway, I did that for first, second, third, and fourth, I think. Yeah, fourth period of the day, right? So, that's half of my morning. So, fifth period, or no. Fifth period was lunch, if I remember. I don't remember. Anyways. No, no, no. I did for first, second, and third. Fourth period was lunch. So fourth period, I would go to lunch. I hated it. I barely even ate. I just hanged out with my friends. Um, the food was just disgusting. I did not like the food. And my mom paid that plan where, you know, you just swipe your card and you have food. But I never ate. I never ate the food. I just, it was disgusting. I hated it. I literally just used that hour, that free hour to hang out with my friends that I didn't get to see all day. And then after that, we would come back and I would go to fifth period and fifth period was math, math class. Math and reading, I think it was. And then sixth period was PE. And my PE coach was so cool because the locker room was disgusting. It stunk really bad. And I just felt uncomfortable in there because people were just doing weird crap. So he's like, if you just wear your jeans, and I had like these long, I think they were Rock Aware or Tommy Ford or whoever they were. They were expensive jeans that I would wear to school every day. He's like, if you just wear your jeans, then he's like, I will just say you dressed out and then you'll get it. You'll be fine. You'll pass. He's like, I just need to see your face. You just need to show up, walk the gym, play basketball, sit. I don't care what you do. Just you need to be in the gym. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And that's what I did. I literally would just... Wear my jeans all day, every single day. I would wash them, I'd clean them, whatever. Take a shower in the morning, put on my jeans and wear them. Even when it was cold, I wore the jeans just so I was dressed out and I would get an A my whole senior year. And then I would just hang out in the gym with my friends. And then I would skip like five minutes before the bell rang, right? Seniors were allowed to leave early. And then I would just go to my bus and I passed my senior year. But I was mad because I wanted to do choir because I was a really good singer. And I wanted to do trauma, drama or whatever it's called, drama class, because I like to act. And I already did that before when I was at the other school, before I moved to Florida, I was in a lot of plays. So I'm like, I want to do those classes. But then my, my stupid guidance counselor freaking wouldn't listen to me. So I didn't get to do them. And I was so mad. I was so mad at her. And then I was like, mom, we need to have a meeting. We needed a meeting. She's like, no, Matthew's fine where he's at. I don't think we need to move him. And then my mom, okay. And like, can you fight for me? Like, damn. Like, she just would not fight for me. And I was so angry. I was just like, no one is listening to me. Like, no one would listen to me. Except my aunt. That was it. And one of my, uh, my math teachers, she would listen to me because she was a cheerleading coach. And she would see me after school at practice and stuff. And she's just like, Matt, what's wrong? She's like, you look sad. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, just no one will listen to me. And that happened. And then I graduated high school and left. And I was so mad because I'm like, I didn't get to do anything I wanted to do. So kids, you guys got to choose what you want to do, what electives you want to do. 
Nowadays, there's a lot of stuff you guys can do. You can travel the world. You can go on an insurance ship to like some type of school somewhere in a different country. There's a lot you guys can do. So please use your mouth, use your words. I know I went all over the place, guys. I'm so sorry, but I'm pissed today. So it doesn't even matter, but I'm moving next year. I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to say 2024. When that ball drops next Sunday night, I'm going to be so happy. So happy. I'll probably bring it in by myself like I did last year. Or no, my parents were here last year, but because they're old school, they were in their rooms. I think my mom was watching the ball drop and go would go diff from the Dick, Dick Clark show to like whatever else. And so many people were different artists were performing and whatever. And I wasn't watching that. I could care less. I was probably watching my laptop or something. And then at midnight, I went to my room, watched the ball drop. And I went to sleep, I think. That's all I did. I think I texted people Happy New Year. And I went to sleep. And then I woke up the next day. And that was it. So, we'll see, guys. Because the countdown starts today. Sunday, in two days, is Christmas Eve. And then Monday is Christmas morning. So, you kids got to be ready. You got to be good. Make sure you don't, you're not on the naughty list. Um, and... Um, yeah, I'm probably going to post tomorrow, guys. I'll post Christmas Eve. I'll try to post Christmas morning if I can. My Christmas present is right here. My mom got me some stuff. So we're going to open it together on Christmas morning. It sounds like it's liquid. So it's probably some type of cologne. But we'll, we'll open it Christmas morning. And then this smells so good. This is like an air freshener. For like, it says... For bathrooms, it says for vacuum cleaners, it says for mop pails, it says for closets, it says for cars, and it says for presents. And it was $6, probably from earlier. But it smells so good. I'm going to probably put it in my room. But that is my Christmas gift that my mom thought about me. So thanks, Mom. No one else got me anything, so it's okay. I'm not jealous, and I'm not mad. <laughs> you get to an age where you just you don't care about gifts anymore. So, but yeah, I can't wait until I can say bye-bye, Florida. And I have a lot of stuff that I would have to move, but I think what I would do is I think I would rent a U-Haul truck and I think I would drive to wherever I'm going to live. If I'm going to live in D.C., I would do it that way. Or if I live in Ohio, that's 18 hours. I think D.C. is more. Um... <clears throat> And then if I lived in Ohio, Ohio is 18 hours, DC is a bit more. If I moved to California or Texas, I would move to Texas, parts of Texas. I wouldn't move where any of my family is. I'd probably move to parts where my family is not because I don't get along with that side at all. So I'd probably move to parts where people don't know me and live and get a job. I would move to a small town because I think that would be fun where everyone knows everyone, but I would be called the outsider for a while until I make friends and I make friends easy. And I would live upstairs and then the business be downstairs if I worked like in a diner or something. And I would just live there peacefully, just me by myself, helping out in the whole town. People would know me and I'd be good. I just, I don't want to be in Florida. I'm done with Florida. I think I'm officially done with Florida. Like, if someone was like, Matt, move in with me next year. Here's your ticket. I'm gone. I'm gone. Like, in a heartbeat. I'd just be like, bye. I don't even think I would say bye. I think I would just, like, book a ticket. And then, yeah, I think I would just book a ticket and probably leave the next morning. Like, I don't, I mean, I probably would do a goodbye party with the people that, like, I actually care about and I want to see. I'd probably do a goodbye party if people could make it. And then I would leave the next morning. Like my aunt was gone like that after my grandpa died. She left like the next Monday. She was out. She was gone. She was like, I'm out. She's like, there's nothing keeping me here no more. I'm gone. And she left. And I was like, take me with you. She was like, I would. <laughs> but yeah, she didn't want to deal with other stuff, other people. I'm like, so what? But I could have been gone in 20... 
last year I could have been gone. When my grandpa died, I could have been gone in June of last year. I could have moved. I mean, done with Florida. Shoot, I could have lived in May of this year. My sister moved to Tennessee in May of this year. I could have went to Tennessee this year and been living up there. But no, the state of stupid Florida. But anyways, guys, this is a long video. I am so sorry. If no one watches it, I totally understand. It's fine. It's long. You guys don't have to watch it if you don't want to. But comment below. Where do you guys think I should move? Tell me what you guys think. I feel like if I move, I could lose the rest of my weight and be happy. I honestly feel like I could. And start my Ozepic shots that I'm going to start doing. Or there's another one. And I think... I think I would change my phone number too. And only give it to people that I trust. To have my phone number. I think that's what I would do too. So people couldn't call me and bother me. I definitely think I would change my phone number. I might even change my server. I might go to a different company, another cell service, probably. I don't know. I've been with T-Mobile for a long time, so I might stay with T-Mobile. But, yeah, I probably would leave. I'd probably just change my phone number. I don't know. I like my phone number. It's easy number to remember. But, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'll talk to you all later. Happy, happy almost Christmas, and I will post tomorrow, and I'll probably post Sunday, and I'll try to post Christmas morning so we can open this gift together, and you guys comment below what you got. I don't know if I should do, comment below, should I do a live so I can talk to you guys on Christmas Day, or should I do a TikTok live so I can talk to you guys, where I have more fans probably, or, actually no, I have more on YouTube than I do on TikTok, um, and likes, I have more, because I have 4.4 million likes on TikTok. Wish it would go higher, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, comment below what you guys want me to do. Should I do a live stream? Should I just post? Or should I just go live on TikTok? Because I might go live tonight on TikTok. Because I still got to sell my products, my 3-in-1 charger from TikTok shop. Guys, go get it. It's $23 right now. And then I still have the little, the little dog thing that you guys can get from TikTok shop too. And I think this goes for 29, I think, I'm not sure. But it's to make your dog get their food and mix some exercise. And it's fun, it's like a toy for them. My dog would not do it, try it already. But I love you guys, peace out. Sorry that it's a long video, people don't like it, but if you're a fan of mine, you'll watch it because some people say it's too short. And um, yeah, I love you guys, bye bye.